Welcome to the Radiology Review Podcast, your on-the-go source for radiology education with your host, Dr. Matt Covington, a board-certified radiologist. Please follow the podcast on Twitter at RadRevPodcast. Send emails to theradiologyreview at gmail.com or visit the website theradiologyreview.com. Welcome back to the Radiology Review Podcast. This episode is part two of my review of congenital cardiac malformations for radiology board exams. If you have not yet heard part one, you can go ahead and check that out after you listen to this episode. This has been a highly requested topic, and I'm glad that I'm finally able to get to this because it is also very high yield for radiology board exams. Speaking of radiology board exams, the start of 2022 is now upon us, and in my mind at least, the start of the new calendar year also in certain ways kicks off the need to start to diligently prepare for the next round of the ABR core exams. With that in mind, please send any topics that you would like me to discuss, and I will try to make episodes on these topics as soon as possible. Also, start to formulate your individualized study plan as part of your preparation for the new year. I will share some of my thoughts on strategies to prepare for the ABR core exam in upcoming material. I am not yet sure whether this will be a podcast episode a post on the Radiology Review Journal at theradiologyreview.com or both. Something along those lines may be helpful for you listeners. Without further ado, let's get into the questions and answers for this episode. First question, what are the five T's of congenital heart disease? And that is T like toy. What are the five T's of congenital heart disease? A mnemonic to help you remember common causes of cyanotic congenital heart disease is the commonly utilized 5 T's mnemonic. And in no particular order, the first T is Tetralogy of Fallot, second T, Truncus Arteriosus, third T, Transposition of the Great Arteries, fourth T, Total Anomalous Pulmonary Venous Return, and fifth T, tricuspid valve anomalies. These specifically refer to causes of cyanotic congenital heart disease, and that basic differentiation between cyanotic and acyanotic congenital heart disease is absolutely key for radiology board exams, and I will cover some of these entities further on this and probably the next episode as well. Next question. Cyanotic congenital heart diseases can be divided based on conditions with increased versus decreased pulmonary vascularity. What are some of the cyanotic congenital heart conditions that present with increased pulmonary vascularity? I previously mentioned that you can group congenital cardiac malformations in terms of being cyanotic or entities that are not associated with cyanosis, And for the cyanotic congenital heart diseases, those can be further subdivided based on whether there is increased versus decreased pulmonary vascularity on imaging, most classically a chest radiograph. Cyanotic congenital heart disease entities that present with increased pulmonary vascularity include a large ventricular septal defect, several types of total anomalous pulmonary venous return, and several types of truncus arteriosus. Next question. What are some common congenital heart disease entities that present with decreased pulmonary vascularity? Cyanotic congenital heart disease entities that present with decreased pulmonary vascularity include Tetralogy of Fallot, Epstein anomaly with coexisting atrial septal defect, and hypoplastic right heart syndrome. Next question. What are classic features of an Epstein anomaly? Epstein anomaly results from abnormal tricuspid valve development with tricuspid regurgitation that often presents with hydrops fatalis. 
Classic imaging features include marked right-sided heart enlargement with a very enlarged right atrium. A buzzword for the appearance of the heart is the box-shaped heart on a chest radiograph. I personally remember this, and this may reveal a little bit of my age, but I remember this as the reverse Nirvana lesion when I was studying for boards, given that the band Nirvana, one of their hit songs was Heart Shaped Box, and the reverse of Heart Shaped Box would be Box Shaped Heart. I don't know if that is helpful for you, but that worked for me. Epstein Anomaly, Box Shaped Heart, Reverse Nirvana Lesion. On cross-sectional imaging, expect apical displacement of the septal and posterior leaflets of the tricuspid valve. You can use the mitral valve attachment as a surrogate for the expected normal position of the tricuspid valve, which in Epstein anomaly will be apically displaced in relation to its normal configuration respective to the mitral valve. There is also an association with maternal lithium use and an association with trisomy 13, trisomy 21, and Turner syndrome. Epstein anomaly may coexist with other congenital cardiac anomalies, and Epstein anomaly is a high-yield entity to be very comfortable with for radiology board exams. Next, what are key features of partial anomalous pulmonary venous return? The underlying anomaly of partial anomalous pulmonary venous return is anomalous connections of some but not all pulmonary veins with the systemic circulation instead of the expected drainage of all pulmonary veins to the left atrium. Four common subtypes exist, supracardiac, cardiac, infracardiac, and mixed. Supracardiac partial anomalous pulmonary venous return has an association with persistent left superior vena cava. Cardiac partial anomalous pulmonary venous return commonly sees pulmonary veins drain to the right atrium and or coronary sinus. Infracardiac partial anomalous pulmonary venous return can have drainage of pulmonary veins or a pulmonary vein to the portal vein, inferior vena cava, or hepatic vein. Partial anomalous pulmonary venous return has a strong association with atrial septal defects in nearly something like half of cases. That is a lot of information coming at you. Once I've finished posting all episodes on these congenital cardiac anomalies, I will make a study guide available for free download at theradiologyreview.com. That might be particularly helpful for this specific topic of congenital cardiac malformations to go back and also check out the content in written form. Next question, what are common features of scimitar syndrome? Scimitar syndrome is a form of partial anomalous pulmonary venous return and is also known as hypogenetic lung syndrome. Scimitar syndrome involves an anomalous pulmonary vein that drains a hypoplastic lung, most commonly connecting to the inferior vena cava, but this can also be seen with anomalous drainage to the portal vein or right atrium. Adults with scimitar syndrome are prone to repeated pulmonary infections, and this may be a clinical presenting symptom provided to you on a multiple choice question stem. If presenting as an infant, Heart failure is typically present, which may be an indication of a coexisting congenital heart condition. If the right to left shunt is significant, pulmonary hypertension can develop, and if that happens in association with scimitar syndrome, this has been termed the Eisenmenger phenomenon. Next, what is total anomalous pulmonary venous return? The prior several questions discussed partial anomalous pulmonary venous return. Now let's discuss some basics of total anomalous pulmonary venous return. Total anomalous pulmonary venous return results when all pulmonary veins have abnormal drainage versus partial anomalous pulmonary venous return where only some of the pulmonary veins drain anonymously. With total anomalous pulmonary venous return, 
you would expect cyanosis, and this is in fact one of the T's of the five T's of cyanotic congenital heart disease. In total anomalous pulmonary venous return, all of the pulmonary veins connect to a structure that will eventually drain into the right atrium, and death will ensue unless there is a coexisting right-to-left shunt via either a large patent foramen ovale or a sufficiently large atrial septal defect. As in partial anomalous pulmonary venous return, there is supracardiac, cardiac, infracardiac, and mixed patterns of total anomalous pulmonary venous return. Supracardiac total anomalous pulmonary venous return is the most common subtype. On imaging, look for right heart enlargement due to increased right heart blood flow with normal left atrial size. Next question. What is the classic descriptor on a chest radiograph of supracardiac total anomalous pulmonary venous return? The classic descriptor on a chest radiograph for a supracardiac total anomalous pulmonary venous return that I am looking for is the snowman appearance on a frontal chest x-ray. This snowman appearance is characteristic of supracardiac total anomalous pulmonary venous return. The snowman appearance results from a dilated vertical vein, superior vena cava, and brachiocephalic vein on top. All three of these form the snowman's head, with the enlarged right atrium forming the snowman's body. Go ahead and look up images on the snowman appearance of supracardiac total anomalous pulmonary venous return if you have not yet seen this. Next question. True or false? Total anomalous pulmonary venous return is associated with a splenia. The answer here is true. Total anomalous pulmonary venous return is associated with heterotaxy and a splenia. And that reminds me that another great topic to present on this podcast is heterotaxy. If that is something that would be helpful for you, please let me know, and I will try to prioritize that. Before I close this episode, let me give you a few tips on studying for congenital cardiac disease for radiology board exams. First of all, subdivide these. For example, you need to know which of these entities cause cyanotic congenital heart disease versus acyanotic congenital heart disease. For the cyanotic congenital heart conditions, you need to know whether those would be expected to produce increased or decreased pulmonary vascularity on imaging, and you need to pay attention to associations with all of these. A lot of these entities are associated with things like heterotaxy syndromes or other associated congenital cardiac coexisting anomalies or genetic aberrations such as trisomies. And all of this together means that these questions are very amenable to multiple choice style testing. Also, be prepared to evaluate cine clips of the heart. The ABR testing software is able to show you cine clips and they may ask you to identify various congenital heart conditions based on the cine clip evaluations, which can include cardiac MRI. Do not underestimate the importance of cardiac imaging on the ABR core exam. In my opinion, cardiac imaging is one of the most critical areas of all of radiology to have down in advance of the ABR core exam. I think that's enough for now. Thank you for listening to this episode. Keep up the good work and study hard. Remember, you have to study really hard to succeed on radiology board exams. So prepare to succeed. I will catch you on the next episode. Content of this podcast is provided for informal educational purposes only for radiology trainees and radiologists. Medical practitioners, please make your own independent assessment before suggesting a diagnosis or recommending any course of treatment. This podcast should not be used for self-diagnosis or self-treatment and is not a substitute for independent professional medical care. Please consult your own physician regarding any diagnosis, imaging interpretation, or course of treatment.